It began when I, uh, I my film was screening uh, around at the studios and it screened at Paramount and the Bad Robot crew went and saw the film and then they invited me in and they, um, we spoke about the things I wanted to do next and um, they pitched me a couple of ideas and the, uh, one of them was Overlord um, and I really responded to that um, that particular pitch anyway because it it felt different from what I'd already done. The real journey started for me when I was uh, a little boy and I, I um, my grandfather was in the Second World War and the um, the um, North Af African um, campaign and he had this amazing photo album of all his adventures and he would take me sit me down and I would sit on his knee and he would show me these pictures and uh, even then I kind of got that that this was bigger than him this was like this is something much much bigger than him and and ever since then I wanted to make a war movie and so when this script came around um, I was immediately drawn to it because it's something that I've always wanted to do it starts off as a sort of war movie that takes a kind of really interesting turn and so it's not your run-of-the-mill type of war movie it's I mean wars horrifying enough um, and then you add on this sort of really mad, crazy sort of horror element, and um, it's just, it just, yeah, it, it kind of um, blew me away in the sense that I never, re never read anything um, quite like it. So I've always been a, a big fan of uh, JJ's and uh, and Bad Robot. They they always manage to do films that um, that are really unexpected and and. Um, and so I think Overlord is definitely in their wheelhouse. At first when I met JJ I was really, really nervous and, um, you know, I'd seen all his films, I respected what he, what he was doing as a filmmaker and, um, and, but in the first few min minutes he really sort of put me at ease and, and it was kind of like, like that for the whole filmmaking experience. He always made me feel like I knew what I was doing and it's really important in this business to have someone that um, when you're starting out that can sort of um, be there and, and sort of um, yeah be a, a, a guide through all this craziness. We opened this film on a C-47 with a bunch of uh, guys that are um, you know from all walks of life they're all in their early 20s um, you know some of them are 19 and you know it's World War Two. It's on the eve of D-Day, and our main guy, Boyce, is sort of sitting there and, um, and quietly observing everything going down. And um, then night falls, uh, and you know, in a, in a distance, we can hear what sounds like, you know, thunderclaps. And then, as we draw closer, the plane starts to shake, and then. Outside, a tremendous bang, and the and the, and the plane shudders, and everyone inside knows this is real. This is the real deal. And you know, one of the things I wanted to do is create this feeling of like um, that you're inside the action, you're inside that plane, and that uh, that's so much to do with sound design, and and, and so much to do with um, you know the characters, um, the actors doing their thing. We decided uh, to set up early um, that this wasn't going to be your uh, your normal um, war movie. We did that through through um, score that that kind of laid some clues. We also um, you know laid in some breadcrumbs early on um, to kind of give 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 you a, a sense of feeling like something's not quite right. So when there is a, a shift in the story, it doesn't come completely by shock. Um, and so we, I guess we, we created a world uh, in which the, the sci-fi horror element can live. Ford is your sort of, he's, he's a hard as nails, uh, seen it all before, um, experienced, uh, 
soldier um, who's been put together with these unexperienced soldiers. Um, and, you know, he wants to accomplish the mission in a certain way. And, uh, you know, because he knows that if he doesn't com complete the mission, a lot of, a lot of guys are going to die. And so he's thinking about the greater mission and, and he has a, a lot of responsibility in, in that. Whilst he's kind of like this hard as nails guy, he, he, he does have this vulnerability, which I, which I think White Russell brought to, to the character. Boyce wants to, wants to save the world, but he also wants to save the people that are close to him. And, you know, there's this young French um, family that they, that they hide out in and they've put them at great risk. And um, he wants to save them as much as he wants to save the, the, uh, the, um, the world. And then there's this beautiful transformation where he, where he, he sort of becomes this man and, and, and he becomes the hero and it's so, uh, it's so great to see. We wanted him to knock politely on the door and sort of ask politely if he could come in, and, and that's how he played him. He was kind of sweet and gentle, and but very, very manipulative at the same time. And when people aren't playing the role of uh, that he wanted, he would quickly turn on them. And in and we sort of see that in the in the movie. He he turns um, like that. We put the actors through boot camp, um, and this is a this is something you hear about with uh, with war movies all the time. You know, the actors uh, get um, sent to these uh, these boot camps where they give them, uh, you know, uh, no access to phones and TV and all the the the. The, uh, the comforts of life. The main thing for me for the boot camp is a team bonding experience. You, they get to uh, uh, moan and groan together and um, they also, you know, when they're humping up a hill, um, they're all feeling the same experience. They're all feeling the same aches and pains. Um, and then they get to sit together uh, around a campfire at night and kind of do some more moaning and groaning <laughs> and they 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 uh at, i think at the end of it um basically even though it's been it's been a very tough time for them i think at the end of it they they, they come out of it really having a life-changing experience in the sense that they would have never have got to do that otherwise and also they get to um work as a team this is the first film where I uh, got to build sets and um, shoot on stages and uh, on a back lot. Before that, I only ever um, shot on location. And so 70% uh, of this was shot on stage at Leaves and Studios in London. And um, so we had to create everything from scratch. Um, and some of it was uh, completely um, fantastical or like, you know, completely made up and other stuff had to be, you know, had to have documentary attention to detail. I'm hoping that people have an out-of-body experience with this movie in the sense that they, you know, they feel like they're going on a roller coaster um, of emotions and like it was an intense ride, like a a hundred minute roller coaster um, that you can't get off.